what we are trying to do is we are building scale because what is expected from us by our customers is reliability and competitiveness. So we are able to meet our customer needs globally and strategically. So the alignment is far better with our customers today. I think we did not really fully leverage on digital. We did not fully leverage on IT. So all these new areas where we can use these tools to better understand not only our customer, but also understand the consumer. And that is, that is what the high growth companies have been able to do. But Indorama model over the years was evolved in such a way. So we have seen minimal supply chain disruptions. You know, and for our customers, that is a reliability factor that they seek in their suppliers. So I think on that one, we already checked the box that we are okay. But this opens up a lot of opportunities. Mm. Life is not a dream. So every day, there's a new day, there's a new event. We are on a journey. We just are convinced. Just be confident in yourself. These times won't last. Thank you so much for having Texas come to your company and having this special time with you. Thank you for coming. And I've heard so much of Texas, so looking forward to this. Now, the first question obviously is how you started. It's amazing. It's only been 20, well, actually quite a long time, 26 years. But in terms of the growth of most companies, this is a very short period of time where you went from being just a producer of um, uh, wool yarn to now a variety of different petrochemical products. Can you tell us a little bit about the overview of your company? What do you do right now? Yeah, thank you for saying that. And I don't think we've grown fast enough. Oh. You know, when you think of companies today in the age of digital, people are growing at 100x, 1000x. And we grew from, in 1993, we were a 1 billion baht company. And we are now 400 odd billion baht. So we grew 400 times. But then there are examples who have grown much faster than that. But I'm very happy with what we have accomplished and our people have accomplished. So what we do is basically we make safety and hygiene materials, components for our customers, which finally lands up with the consumer in their daily life necessities. So it's an everyday thing that we all come across, whether it's your drinking water bottles, or it's your safety in your car, airbags, or even in the, in the uh, for instance, diapers. Yeah. So our products go into a lot of daily consumption items. I think it's really interesting because we talked to your son earlier how, um, you know, it's very important to always think beyond what you do. And that is exactly what you've been doing in the past years. And a lot of these products, a lot of people may not know that they're actually a part of our lives. Uh, and, and you are a global brand as well. Um, so what is then the next big thing or what is the main focus for your company now? Uh, of course, you're always looking to the future. So we are evolving. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we started from 90s, we evolved over time. We went global, we went in different businesses. But what some may not realize is all, all of our 12 verticals, they are all linked to each other. Mm. What we are trying to do is we are building scale because what is expected from us by our customers is reliability and competitiveness. And over time, you lose that. Mm. How we can retain our competitiveness is with scale and by more integration. So today, IVL is a much more integrated play and a global play. So we are able to meet our customer needs globally and strategically. So the alignment is far better with our customers today. Going forward, I, I do expect to see more of that, but what is going to change now is how we do business. Mm. I think we did not really fully leverage on digital. We did not fully leverage on algorithms. We did not fully leverage on IT. We did not, so all these new uh, areas, which are, you know, areas where we can use these tools 
to better understand not only our customer, which could be the brand owners, the FMCG companies, but also understand the consumer. What is the consumer looking for? And that is, that is what the high growth companies have been able to do. And that is a journey for me still, still to explore. That's amazing. You know, when you're talking, when I'm talking to you, I feel like I'm talking to a very young person who's, who's always changing. I'm not saying that you're, you're old or anything, but I'm just saying that, that is, that's interesting that um, you're, you're always thinking about what you can do more. Um, and that moves on to the next question about what is success? What in terms, in terms of factors contribute to success of companies, especially yours? Because you, you, a lot of companies that have been family-based, let's just say, um, are more than one generation, but over one period of one generation, you have been so successful uh, from being uh, you know, a national regional brand to now a global brand. What are the things that you know, our viewers need to know to follow your footsteps? Every situation is unique. So it's difficult for me to put it in the chair of the audience. But from an ideal perspective, success is history. How we are going to maintain that success is what we have to work on. And that's what I believe we are trying to work on. So, you know, we are putting SAP for the first time. We probably should have done it five years ago. And we are now investing in digital space for our own company, building our what we call Indorama Ventures Excellence Program. That means we have 125 sites globally in 33 countries. We want to be the best. There's nothing the best, but we have to keep improving ourselves so that we can remain relevant to our customers. If we remain relevant to the customers, we get a share of his wallet, and that makes us successful. So the success of the past is, is, is something that we don't want to get complacent about. Mm. Most important is what are we doing for tomorrow? Whether, whether I like it or not, I am getting old. <laughs> and, and, but the company is getting more better. Mm. And the people in the company are getting better. Mm -hmm. So that will keep the company growing. And that's the, that's the mission. That's the mission for the company. How do we continue to create value? for all our stakeholders. Of course, for our shareholders, because that is how we'll have the capital to invest. But also for our employees, because these are the people who are building the company. We have to also care about the environment. We have to care about the communities around our factories. If we are not a good, good neighbor, then we won't have the license to operate. So all these things go into each company's thinking and working. It's a big family. Mm. And as we would nourish a family, I intend to continue to nourish IVL and make sure that the succession, the next level, is even better than I am. Mm. You know, it's very interesting that you say that, and, and a lot of people do say that in a leadership role that, you know, keep looking to the future, always thinking about change. Uh, a lot of our viewers, they might be in different uh, stages with their businesses. Um, but you know, when you're always thinking about the future, when you're always thinking about what more that you can do, people can burn out, perhaps. I mean, do you, do you stay up at night thinking about, you know, how, how the future will be? How do you um, balance that, you know, uh, in terms of... I don't stay try, up. Try I to don't go stay up. For, for, for growth, but then, of course, you know, that, that thing about scaling upwards, that's always a big challenge for people. Yeah, so I do that in my daytime. I don't worry about it at <laughs> night. Uh, basically, we... I've come to realize and believe that we have to keep evolving and we have to keep getting better because the competition is out there. And if we, if we blink, then somebody else will catch up with us. So the idea is that do the right thing. I, I mentioned about digital space. I mentioned about algorithms. This is something that we should have done five years ago when I think about it, but it's never too late. We are still here, we are still relevant, and we want to remain relevant. So the leadership, that is the key. The people are the key. It's the inspiration part, what you're saying maybe, is, is there. But it's the hard work, the perspiration, 
that that has to continue with the next generations with the next leadership and things are going to become even more exciting going forward with the opening up for the internet iot the ability to you know today look at e-commerce during the covid times mm -hmm. we have seen things not slow down mm -hmm. we have seen our product sales go up yes. during during 2020 yeah. and that is because the e-commerce uh, platform has really become successful I want to talk about that later, but before we do, I want to ask about just a little bit uh, about the past. Of course, there's always challenges. Um, what kind of challenges have you faced in the past and have overcome that you remember now and you think, hey, hey, maybe that was a good thing that that happened? <laughs> you know, life is not, life is not a dream. So, so every day there's a new day, there's a, there's a new event. And as a global firm or even as a small firm that we started, there were events in, in our careers. Mm -hmm. But the way my wife and I, we looked at it, she has been the strongest supporter to me. And the way we looked at it was, look, shit happens, deal with it. So, <laughs> so no excuses, no challenges, no obstacles. We are on a journey. We, we just are convinced that we have a very bright future we have the right business model. We have to be relevant to our customers. And now only the change we are bringing in our minds is not only the direct customers, but the end consumer. Mm. So how can we understand what the consumer needs? And that is the next piece of the journey, which is going to be even more exciting going forward. So, so we think of events, they're going to be events. This is the world of VUCA, you understand VUCA. So in that world of VUCA, there's always going to be something that you don't like. But mm. none of them are going to be such that will, that will stop you from your journey. As long as you have your beacon, you know where you're going, you have the resilience, you'll even get better. During COVID, we are now operating better virtually. Yes. And, you know, in the past, we were traveling all over the world. I was traveling 15 days in a month. Now, for the last 10 months, I've not gone anywhere. It's not stopped anything. We are even communicating maybe better. Maybe we are celebrating a bit less, but work is going on. I'm having so many important calls with my clients. I think that's a great point that you've made that um and it's one of the things that people always have a challenge with, whether you're running a business or within your life, and that is how do you get over things that go wrong? And as you said, it happens. Thanks. You just have to move forward and, and, and keep going. And talking about keeping going, and as you said just earlier, COVID-19 came, you know, there, there were some, you know, struggles, but then you went on and it has been quite successful for you for 2020. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how it was at the beginning of this year until now where we are going to finally end this very memorable year? <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, obviously when we started in February, we were cancelling all our face-to-face -face meetings and there was a lot of anxiety. As a global firm, you remember COVID, apart from Wuhan in China, the first outside China it hit was in Italy and we have manufacturing in Italy so we very soon saw in February and March borders shut down in Europe between countries we have open borders and then some of our people started contracting COVID as well so the first thing of, of you know importance to us was are we doing enough for our people how are we keeping them safe how are we operating from home so that is where the resilience of our management was witnessed. You know, globally we have 25,000 people and we have had a very successful migration from a classical way of managing to the new normal today. And all our sites are operating. We have 125 sites in 33 countries. So the resilience of our people was visible during this COVID period. A lot of anxiety in March, April, but as we got the grip of it, we did 
daily calls, practically daily calls, we formed our global emergency management teams. And these people, you know, rose to the occasion. And that's the pride I have in my, my, my teams and, and the company, that our people believe in the company and believe in our, our journey and know that we will do the right things. Mm. And, and talking about doing the right thing, um, Indorama Ventures, as I said, is very integrated into everybody's lives. Uh, it is petrochemical, and of course it has some impact to the environment. Oh, what is your view with this issue, and how is your relationship with um, global warming? Like you said, it's a given. Mm. We are in the chemical space. In the chemical space, it is seen to be more harmful to the environment. But I won't get into the marketing part of it, yeah. But basically, you need plastics in daily life. It eases your way of living. And what we do need to do is we need to be get, become more responsible in how we consume plastics and how we dispose of this plastic. We are very clear that our license to operate is only as long as we are a good corporate citizen. What we have done is we have announced two years back, I believe, that we are going to invest 1.5 billion US dollars in sustainability and in circularity, which includes recycling. And by 2025, 25% of our output in Europe and in America would be made from recycled content, which our customers, we're just following our customers' needs. So that is bringing the right alignment and we are making good progress. We are on track of our, our ambition on our sustainability goals. So for us it's a given. We are going, we, we, know the, we know the rules. We are global. We understand what the regulators want. We understand what the consumer wants. Let me paraphrase it. We think we understand what the consumer wants. Well that's very interesting how you say that. We, you cannot assume that you understand. We cannot assume we understand, but mm. we have to keep learning. Mm. As, as we make that learning, we are going to modify and, and evolve accordingly. And so would our customers. So we get up learnings from our customers, what they need. And what we are now upping the antenna is by going out even in the marketplace. So we are going to understand what the, end, the man on the person, the person on the road. Mm. You know, it is exactly what you're saying you know you can't deny that plastic is a part of our life COVID-19 has definitely showed that with hygiene and uh, you know being safe with uh, the spread of the pandemic we've needed relied on plastic um, and indeed there has been a disruption in the supply chain with the COVID-19 how do you think it has changed over 2020 and, and where do you think uh, Indorama will Ventures will fit into that, uh, you know, the newly evolved supply chain that we're seeing here now in the world. Yes, we read a lot, lot about supply chain uh, disruptions, but Indorama model over the years was evolved in such a way that we are a regional company. So we have our entire supply chain, entire means more or less our entire supply chain within each region. We are fully integrated in North America. We make our feedstocks. In Europe, part of our feedstocks we make ourselves, and the same in Asia. So we have seen minimal supply chain disruptions. You know, and for our customers, that is a reliability factor that they seek in their suppliers. So I think on that one, we already checked the box that we are okay. But this opens up a lot of opportunities. Mm. There's so much sense of insecurity today of the dependence on China. And for good reasons, China did a great job. They made the world very competitive. But there's too much of uh, dependence on China mm -hmm. in some industries and some people's mind, which is actually a great thing for the rest of the world. Countries like Thailand, in my opinion, this is a great opportunity for Thailand. I've never shut down a factory in Thailand even for a day. I mean, we talk about protests, we talk about coups, and we talk about disruptions, political issues. But none of that has had an impact on the manufacturing. We did have the water problem, the, the flooding. The flooding, I was going to ask you that. So that yeah, flooding, the flooding if, did affect every factory. That though. impacted, yeah. and that is one area when the government takes care of how they manage the water. Mm -hmm. 
whether it's from a drought scenario or from a flooding scenario, the investment by the government on the water management, that will make this country even more desirable from an investor's standpoint. Mm. So we are in a good, good position, I would say. So the supply chain disruption is going to impact a bit on Chinese. They are going to go for more local consumption, but it will open up the doors and opportunity for countries like us. And talking about those opportunities and the future, as uh, we say goodbye to 2020, what do you think will be, uh, you know, will, will it be now the world of trade and for your business, how do you think the environment will be for 2021? Do you think maybe perhaps we'll have to wait longer, maybe perhaps another year for things to get back to what you could say? Yeah, the term that we've been talking about, a new normal that is safer and better. We are already in the new normal. Mm -hmm. I don't think business travel will go back to what it was like in 2019. We are getting more comfortable with this virtual way of doing business. And for me, that is one part of the new normal. As far as consumption is concerned, you know, today you go to the department stores in Thailand, they're full of people. I think people are now frustrated of not shopping. People are going back and shopping. They're buying a lot and they don't have the option to go overseas. So I think uh, trade is picking up. So actually, all the advisors we are talking to, not all, but most of the advisors they are talking to, feel that by 2021 end, the demand is going to be much more than it was in 2019. So not only a full recovery, even the pent up demand, the refillment of the pipeline, all that is going to lead to even the oil price getting back towards $60 a barrel. Mm -hmm. So in our chemical industry for us, the price of oil is important. And the higher the price of oil, the better for Indorama products. And, and that's what we are gearing up for. So I think 2022 is going to be, a, I believe it's going to be a great year. And 21 is going to be that transition from a 20 to a 22. Well, that is a very bright future indeed. But in the meantime, there are people who are, or who have learned a lot from the challenges of 2020 and, and they want to be successful. And, for, and of course, look up to you and other leaders in our society. What is your advice for them? Resilient, I mean, is hard times for many, but hard times don't stay. Tough people stay on. So just, just be confident in yourself. That's the best advice I can give. And, and as my wife told me, when I was going through my lows, she said, look, it's up to you. Nobody's going to come and rescue you. You, you, you stand up on your own feet. And, and that's my advice. These times won't last. Okay, thank you so much. I love how you mentioned your wife. I'm, thank you. I'm sure she's happy and she wants to watch this interview. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming.